What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible, as many great debaters as possible, as many commentaries, and as many first and 15ths as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And we appreciate your support and getting us this far. And while you're down there, you can also join, become a member of Unique Access Entertainment. We've got double digit members. We're trying to get to triple digits sooner than later. So please help us along the way. Now today for first and 15th, I was thinking about a lot of things as I always do. And a recent conversation I had with Kwame, if you haven't seen that already about his best album and it was Prince Sign of the Times, there's the link. You can check it out right there. If you haven't seen it already or send it to somebody that really likes Prince and or Kwame, I think they'd really appreciate it. But you know, Sign of the Times by Prince is a somewhat of a concept or a concept album. But Kwame in particular has one of the first, if not the real first concept album, I would say, when he was Kwame and A New Beginning, A Day in the Life of Polkadelic Adventure. And that is the topic at hand today because I want to do something about concept albums. I know I'm going to do multiple episodes of this because I just want to talk about a few at a time and why I thought they were interesting, special, unique, distinctive, etc. But the thing about it is from my definition of a concept album it's not like the great adventures of slick rick where it was all these different great adventures that was that's a idea or a theme but that's not a concept like how kwame and some of the other artists i'm going to highlight did where it's an actual story or it follows along largely with the story throughout the entirety of the album and that to me i think is important and i think helped make us love rap so much because there have been several real concept albums and another one as you could argue maybe is a concept album would be death certificate by ice cube which i think is one of the best three rap albums of all time i'm not sure which is number one two or three but it's phenomenal one of my favorite albums and to me that's more of a theme the life side the death side and uh, as ice cube has talked about in interviews throughout his career uh the awakening of the black man in the wilderness that is north america and his influence from the nation of islam at the time so to me that's more of a theme of the project and he looked at it from all these different ways tied into this death certificate theme more than the actual concept album where it was a whole story following one character one set of characters throughout Unlike, say, Kwame in The New Beginnings, A Day in the Life of Polkadelic Adventure, because throughout this album, you know, we have skits, which are on there, and it also tracks Kwame's adventures. So it's really about a day in the life of this high school kid, this kid that's coming of age, doing all these different things. They have a song called A Day in the Life, uh, One of the Big Boys, which is one of my favorites, Who's That Guy, another one of my favorites, and then, of course, the big single, Only You, which is toward the end of the album and culminates the album and really, I think, is really Kwame's signature song, his probably his biggest song as an artist, and to me, one of his best songs. And, you know, just a great song, great video, lots of different things, but it fit into this theme of who he was and what was going on. So... As we think of these concept albums, that one really stood out to me. And I remember thinking like, man, Kwame, who is part of the alumni, as you can see on my shirt here, uh, shout out to the alumni as always. But Kwame is an amazing artist and continues to do a lot of great things. And another artist that I remember early to the game, really delving into this concept thing deeply and he'll be included on some of the other episodes I do, but I wanted to shout out, of course, Master Ace and Master Ace Incorporated Slaughterhouse in particular. Kwame, A Day in the Life came out in 1990 and Slaughterhouse uh, came out in 1993. And this was to me his treatise or his examination of what was going on with the proliferation of gangster rap and what was happening. And you know, this in reality is a concept, even though, you know, there's skits, there's different things that go throughout the album, but it's a satire and a look at 
as we see through these skits with the teachers and the different things that are going on, what's happening in this slaughterhouse and how the rappers, uh, MC Negro and the Ignan MC, as they their journeys go and different things. And, you know, we have a walk through the valley. We have the Jeep as Brother remix on there, the Who You Jack In, Saturday Night Live toward the end of the album as well. But the reality is, you know, people to me looked at this as like, oh, Ace and crew are, are dissing gangster rap, which I never looked at it like that. It was the mindless thuggery, the senseless violence, and the proliferation of it to where it was becoming this big theme. And for those that recall, there was a lot of East Coast rappers and rappers from everywhere that were so influenced by what was going on thanks to the success of the West Coast artists at the time. Of course, Schooly D created it and early on the East Coast, we had Just Ice and Boogie Down Productions, you know, gangsters of rap or hardcore gangster rap. But the Ice T's, the NWA's, the Easy E's, the DJ Quicks, the Compton's Most Wanted were early in the game. So by the time we get to Slaughterhouse, we've had a lot of this success. We've had Golden Platinum Records. We've seen the explosion of popularity of especially the LA, the Southern California gang lifestyle. And Ace, yes, was addressing that, but I think the bigger picture was we were getting a lot of other artists also appropriating and embracing and endorsing a lot of those themes that weren't from there uh, and just decidedly got tough out of nowhere that didn't include that uh, earlier in their material, but then also used it, I'd say, as a marketing tool, a selling tool, something to exploit. So I think Ace did a brilliant job and it's one of my two. I kind of go back and forth which one of a Master Ace's albums is my favorite, but that's probably it's one or another one that I'll talk about in another episode here on concept albums and the best rap concept albums because Ace came right back and 95 was sitting on Chrome, which followed this evolution of going to the West Coast. And it tells the story through these skits and these different things throughout that album, which I thought was amazing. You had the INC ride, you had the B side, sitting on Chrome and Born to Roll in particular were some of the standouts from that album, of course. That was Ace's best selling album. He had his most video plays, most radio play all kinds of stuff and ace was early to the game promoting that and being a east coast artist promoting something that was so big on the west coast and i would say the western third of the country the car culture which of course is big everywhere but the way that it was being presented in delicious vinyl being on the west coast ace and i did a a misexposed about was he from los angeles which a lot of people thought check it out there that link but the reality is these were early in the game, in my opinion, of these actual concept albums that were really threaded through and, and told a story that, again, differentiated it. So, you know, very excited. And, you know, this sets up to the last main one that I want to focus on today, because, again, this is going to be part one. I definitely want to get your comments your thoughts on this, also other ones you want me to talk about in future editions of this series that I'm going to be doing because Prince Paul's A Prince Among Thieves in 99. This came out on Tommy Boy, which of course had Sets of Sonic, which Prince Paul was in, and then he produced De La Soul, of course, also on Tommy Boy, and then Prince Among Thieves came out in 99 on Tommy Boy, and this one is very pronounced and goes through it because you have Tariq's Dilemma, How It All Started, just Another Day, My Big Chance. These are some of the songs on Prince Among Thieves that show you this narrative flow that's going on throughout the project. And they has all these different characters coming out. Big Daddy Kane is in there. Cool Keith is in there, uh, in addition to uh, Prince Paul himself. But there's so much vibrancy and, I think, layers to it. And it tells a pretty interesting story if you're so inclined to listen to it all. And again, this is something I think that really showed how creative rap was and had been since the 70s. But as we get into the early or 
the earliest with Kwame in 90, but then in the in the mid 90s with Master Ace, and then in the late 90s with uh, Prince Paul, we get to see this real concept theme being explored more and more and done, in my opinion, extremely well. And the songs in particular, you know, in Ace's case and Kwame's in particular, some of these songs got really big and the videos were super uh, borderline ubiquitous, but uh, Prince Paul didn't enjoy the same commercial success and those songs and videos did not enjoy the same uh, appeal as say, Kwame's with Only You that, you know, Master Ace did with uh, Born to Roll in particular. But that doesn't mean that Prince Among Thieves wasn't a great album because I thought it was, it was pretty, pretty potent in a lot of ways. But that being said, the concept album, I think, is interesting. And I don't want to just put the label on it, as I said earlier, just on themes that are recurring in an album like the concept is executed and carried out throughout the entirety of the project which i think is valuable and important so you know i talked about four albums uh up to 1999 so i wanted to get your opinion did you like these four albums did you not like these four albums were there some that came out earlier than this that you think really qualify based on what i was saying of the criteria and then definitely other albums that you want me to talk about because I already have several in mind I want to do for part two because there are a lot of other great ones that at that point hadn't been released yet. So I'm very excited to bring that back. But for now, hit us up in the comment section. Let me know what you think and definitely looking forward to reading and seeing what you're saying. And somebody here at Unique Access will be responding to you and getting your uh, feedback, etc. And we're very appreciative for that. You know, definitely while you're down there, uh, like, subscribe, and share our content. Join as a member if you haven't already. And as always, you can follow me on all social media at Soren Baker. And appreciate you watching us here on the 1st and 15th. And we'll look forward to hearing from you and catch you next time.